Hi, it's Katrina. From the tomb of a mysterious Chinese emperor to new evidence that Stone Age people love to party, here are 10 of the most mysterious recent archaeological discoveries. Number 10. The Tomb of the Emperor The Great Terracotta Army is one of the most amazing archaeological discoveries ever made. But what a lot of people don't know is that it's only one of many amazing tombs, also packed full of incredible statues. The Terracotta Army was part of the tomb of the first emperor of China, Qin Shi Huang. But there was a tomb recently discovered that belonged to a Han Dynasty emperor named Jing, who lived around 188 to 141 BC. According to historical records, Emperor Jing was a stubborn man and an arrogant ruler who once beat his cousin to death during a board game. Jing was heavily influenced by the rise of Confucianism. He had a fairly stable style of governing that the people enjoyed, and he even reduced taxes, did not partake in too many military expeditions, and stopped punishing people by mutilating them. All in all, he went down in history as a pretty good emperor, so maybe his brother deserved it. Upon his death, Jing was put inside a tomb that rivaled even that of the first emperor whose tomb has never been opened. So far, about 8,000 figurines have been found as part of the Terracotta Army. However, Emperor Jing was buried with between 40,000 and 50,000 detailed statues that were meant to serve him in the afterlife. But he didn't only take warriors with him. Figurines have been found depicting courtiers, concubines, dancers, horses, pets, and even court eunuchs. It's not clear why the Chinese government hasn't been giving as much attention to this other tomb, even though it may be just or even more impressive as Emperor Qin. Number 9. Wine Rituals An archaeological expedition has recently discovered leftover traces of wine in a zoomorphic vessel used in ritualistic ceremonies thousands of years ago. The wine vessels come from the archaeological site of Aradetis Orgora in the country of Georgia. The expedition was led by researchers from the Kafuskari University of Venice and the Georgian National Museum. The vessel dates back to the year 3000 BC. It's shaped like an animal, though it's not clear what kind. The vessel has three feet on its bottom and a hole in the back for pouring, but the head is missing. It was discovered on the charred remains of a floor where cultic activities once took place. What they found inside the vessel was preserved pollen from the common grapevine, suggesting that wine was used heavily in the rituals of the ancient Kura Araxes culture. The Kura Araxes people lived in modern-day Georgia, parts of Iran, and in the Palestinian region. They are the oldest prehistoric culture in the area, thriving up until the 3rd millennium BC. Where they went and why they vanished is still a bit of a mystery. Archaeologists believe the wine was either offered to the gods or consumed by whoever was participating in the ritual ceremony. It's also an interesting discovery because now we know grape wine has been cultivated in Georgia for at least 5,000 years, making it one of the oldest Georgian rituals. Even today, wine is drunk from vessels made of animal horns in rituals. Number 8. Cannibal Aztecs Bones discovered at the Great Temple of the Aztecs in Mexico have revealed some pretty disturbing secrets. Archaeologist Gabino Lopez Arenas investigated skulls, jaws, and other bones that were found as remnants of offerings inside the temple, as well as around the old historic center. These pieces of bones were found with cuts and exposure to fire, which has led archaeologists to conclude that between the years 900 and 1521, the rulers of the Aztec civilization, as well as the priests, and some of the most prominent warriors practiced cannibalism as part of their religion. According to Lopez, the evidence found throughout the ancient capital of Tenochtitlan shows that humans were decapitated and often dismembered, and then, almost immediately after that, they were thrown into a fire. Their bones show evidence of prolonged cooking, then immediate cutting. This suggests that the humans were roasted raw over the flames, then their flesh was scraped off and consumed. But why did the most important Aztec leaders eat human beings? Archaeologists say it has to do with absorbing the strength which still remained in the victims' bodies. The Aztecs looked at their human victims as the incarnations of whichever gods they represented, which meant when they ate their flesh, they would share in their divinity. However, it's important to note that they didn't eat human meat as part of their everyday diets. This was strictly a ritual thing for the elite members of society. Number 7. The Lady of Cao 
The Lady of Cao is considered by archaeologists and historians to be the most important and powerful woman anywhere in ancient Peru. Peruvian archaeologist Regulo Franco, who was involved in the discovery of the Lady of Cao's tomb, says that she was the first woman in the Mocha civilization to have absolute power over the nation. She was the absolute ruler. The Lady of Cao was buried in an impressive tomb, which remained hidden and untouched for 1,700 years until archaeologists recently came upon it. Her tomb was found at the Cao Viejo Temple, part of El Brujo archaeological complex on the northern coast of Peru. She was entombed with a fabulous collection of jewelry and grave goods, more even than most buried kings. She was also found entombed with five additional people, two priests, a pair of bodyguards, and a teenage girl. These people were meant to assist the Lady of Cao in the afterlife and were probably sacrificed for the opportunity. At the time of the discovery, the archaeologists had no idea they were dealing with a queen. She was encased in 25 layers of cloth under a barrier of copper plates. Now researchers are saying that at 25 years old, the Lady of Cao was the most important ruler of the Moche people, even at her unimposing stature of 4 foot 10. She's also proof that women played a much more prominent role in South American cultures than previously believed. Number 6. Beast Engravings Archaeologists are still baffled by the wild discoveries at Sutton Hoo, the biggest treasure hoard ever found on British soil. Specifically, the discovery of weird beasts etched into a mysterious artifact has caused some confusion. As you may already know, Sutton Hoo is a massive archaeological site that was first excavated back in 1939. It began with two medieval cemeteries and turned into a buried treasure unlike anything previously found. And even though the discovery was technically made around 80 years ago, there are new mysteries appearing all the time. For example, there was an artifact recently investigated that scientists couldn't identify. According to Dr. Brunning with the British Museum, there is a heavy gold buckle covered in bizarre features and depictions of monstrous beasts that nobody can figure out. The creatures are ambiguous with limbs that are long and bodies contorted in unnatural positions. They look like goblins or maybe aliens, and historians don't understand why they were engraved on the buckle or what they could mean for the rest of the horde. Could the warrior the buckle belonged to have been fighting strange medieval monsters back in 625 AD when the treasure was lost? Or it could be that whoever crafted the buckle had a horrifying imagination. Right now, Archaeologists don't have the answers, and they can't even figure out what kind of monsters are depicted here. Number 5. Viking Age Mysteries A strange Viking mystery has been revealed in Norway. Using geo-radar, an archaeologist working with the NTNU University Museum discovered 15 burial mounds and 32 carved ditches. The issue here is that the discoveries were all made buried under solid ice. The archaeologists waited for the ground to be frozen and covered in snow, then took a four-wheeler and a ground-penetrating radar device to see what he could find. Ground-penetrating radar sends electromagnetic signals into the subsurface, painting an image of what's hidden under the ice. It's kind of like an x-ray machine for the planet. Turns out there is a lot going on underground here. The radar proved that about nine feet under this solid ice is an entire world of Viking mysteries. Nobody knows who is buried in these 15 tombs or what treasures could be frozen solid down there. Archaeologists estimate the burials were from between 650 to 950 AD, during what's known as the Viking Age. One of the biggest burial mounds was clocked in at having an inner dimension of around 100 feet, meaning it would have towered over the landscape before being destroyed and covered in ice. The radar also showed a ship burial under the ice meaning there is a full Viking longboat down there with human bones and grave goods in it. But because the ice is so thick, it's basically impossible to bring these artifacts to the surface, but it has kept it safe from grave robbers. Number 4. The Oldest Shoe A leather shoe was recently found in a German bog. That's not the most interesting headline, but it gets better when you learn that the shoe was lost in that bog for 2,000 years and uncovered recently by archaeologists who say the shoe probably slipped off someone's foot, got trapped in the sticky mud, and then was perfectly preserved. The shoe was a type of sandal, simple, made from animal leather and closed with a leather strap. The shoe was found beside the remains of an ancient wooden road, a collection of wooden boards that had been laid across the marsh to allow people safe passage. Archaeologists even found a broken carriage axle. The obvious consensus here is that there was some kind of accident on the road, 
the wooden cart's axle broke, and someone lost their shoe trying to fix it. Thanks to the acidic conditions of the bog, the shoe remained just as it had been at the time of its departure from its owner's foot. It's now the oldest shoe ever discovered in the region, and a great piece of evidence of how people dressed at the time. Number 3. Dog Burials In Catalonia, Spain, archaeologists have come across evidence of ritual dog burials. These burials date back around 4,200 years before today, belonging to what is known as the Pit Grave Culture. They were a group of Neolithic people in southern Europe, and the new discovery of the dog burial shows how they had a very close relationship with their animals. Dogs have been man's best friend for quite some time, and this is just more proof. Also interesting is that the dogs were often buried next to their owners, obviously thought of as part of the family. Genetic analysis even shows that they were fed similar diets to what humans were eating then, suggesting the people shared their meals with their dogs. So far, 26 dogs have been found in funerary structures from across four sites in Spain. Most of the pets only grew to be around six years old. However, a lot of the dogs died before they were one year old, suggesting they had been the victims of ritual sacrifice. But for what? Archaeologists don't know. They say the rituals only lasted for a span of about 100 years during the Iron Age. Afterwards, dogs continued to be buried with their owners, but they weren't killed on purpose. Number 2. Stone Age Raves Looks like raging parties are nothing new. Apparently, they had raves back in the Stone Age. A new study has revealed proof that our ancient ancestors were dancing around like teenagers with glow sticks and EDM music. However, they were doing it a little differently. According to auditory archaeologist Rita Rainio, Stone Age people used ornaments made of elk teeth to create their music. These ornaments, almost like teeth wind chimes, were attached to their clothing. When they danced, the ornaments would make a great rattling noise. This apparently made it easier for them to immerse themselves in a musical soundscape, riding their bodies to the rattling of the teeth. It was a Stone Age dance party. Rita actually tried it out for herself dancing non-stop for six hours while wearing the elk tooth ornaments, reconstructed based on artifacts recovered from prehistoric graves in Russia. At a burial site, 177 graves of men, women, and children were found, with at least half containing elk tooth ornaments. The consensus is that the Stone Age people of Russia were fascinated with music and dance at least 5,000 years ago, but maybe even further back. Number 1. Medieval Plague Victims Evidence has been found that in the initial days of the Great Plague, which wiped out roughly 60% of the European population in the 14th century, the victims of the pandemic were given very tidy burials. One of the problems with identifying plague victims today is that the disease ravaged the body so quickly that it never left any markers on the skeletons. But now, by studying DNA taken from the teeth of dead people, Archaeologists working on the Plague Project were able to identify any person killed by the plague. Near Cambridge in the United Kingdom, archaeologists identified perfectly normal individuals buried at a parish cemetery. This is in stark contrast to the mass graves that came later on. What this suggests is that the more important a person was, the more likely they were to get a proper burial and not just be tossed into a pit. It also shows that there was more care taken near the beginning of the plague, Whereas later, after half the population had been wiped out, all discretion was thrown to the wind and people were dumped or buried haphazardly. Thanks for watching! Would you have gone to a Stone Age rave? Do you want to be buried with your dog? Let me know in the comments below and remember to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time! Bye!